Okay, so for those that are new to the channel, because yes, I did get some new subscribers, and it happened to be specifically about one video that I never expected to go out of control like it did. I was recently talking about Bulldor's Gate, and uh, I guess I'm about to talk about it again. Yeah. Okay, so first off, if you're new to the channel, welcome, what's up, glad to have you. Um, this is very rare that I follow up a big video with another video that's almost the same topic. It is not something that I normally do. I very much just talk about the topics when I have the time to in a very podcast nature. And it just so happens that I was not the only one, like I said, that I guess was really aching for this dungeon crawler experience to come back to give us something to really sink our teeth into. And not only do we get the first game on, um, and a little bit, little bit of an argument here and there about what it is. I personally would tell you that it, it, it counts as a remaster. Um, I get that there were people that were very much against that. I say that it counts as a remaster. Uh, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance, Baldur. I, I think it's Baldur. I could be wrong. Um, Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance. I think it was a remaster. It looked better than it originally did. It had way better colors. It was produced in full widescreen, 1080p resolution, and... It has trophies, which is something that simply would not have existed and would not exist if it just got like a PlayStation Now port or something like that. It, to me, it was a remaster. If we're going to count that Final Fantasy VII that was released on the PC as a remaster, then that was a remaster. Okay, guys, it was a remaster. In my personal opinion, if you don't see it that way, then to you, it's a port. Uh, but if they just ported straight the PlayStation 2... Um, there's a difference between, if you remake the engine completely, that's not necessarily a remaster, that's a remake. Um, so, something like Secret, uh, Sword of Mana, when that was redone, that's a whole new game. Even if it plays like the old game, it's in a new engine, it's a remake, it's not a remaster. They didn't, but that's, that's neither here nor there. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2 could be getting a re-release. That's cool, and if it gets the exact same treatment, that's even cooler. This news is coming to us by IGN. See it up there? It's IGN. And here we go. After the surprise re-release, uh, to me it was a damn surprise, of the original Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on console, uh, PC and mobile to come later, which is cool, actually, because I'd actually really like to play that on my PC and get a couple of my buddies and whatnot to play it with me. Um, it seems fan reaction has been strong enough. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Even my little channel had a pretty huge video about it uh, for a uh, uh, re-release of part two is on the table. Now, this could actually lead us to something else that I'm immensely excited about. So let's cut back and talk about that for a second. Okay, so if this goes the way I'm hoping, with, with, with part two being on the table to get the same treatment and come out, then guys, I'm said this would be so cool. If they do this, if we get part one and we get part two, why not Champions of Norath? Why not Champions of Norath Return to Arms? Holy shit. To me, personally, those four games, Dark Alliance, Dark Alliance 2, Return to Arms, and uh, 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 Champions of Norath, and Champions of Norath Return to Arms, those are the four big dungeon crawlers of the PlayStation 2 era. I feel, in terms of consoles, for damn sure, I feel like those are the games that we are talking about here. And, man, I must have played, I must have played Champions of Norath especially Return to Arms. That's the one that I owned, and then I went back to play the other one. But Return to Arms, I think I played that game. I, I think I beat that game legitimately with every single class. Legitimately, every single class. And I used to play it. I bought a multi-tap for that game. 
On the PlayStation 1, I had a multi-tap. I got it for Twisted Metal. On the PlayStation 2, I did not have a multi-tap and seen very little purpose to having a multi-tap. Sure, I thought about it for Dead or Alive 2, but there was like one person that could fight me on the original Dead or Alive uh, 2 hardcore for the PlayStation 2. Like, so, so the point of getting the four players. It just, it wasn't really a thing. Sometimes we played tag matches afterwards, but the primary reason was I was playing Return to Arms and I was like, I want to play this with four people. So I bought the multi-tap so that me, so that, so that me, uh, my buddy, his, his girlfriend, and another could play with us. And damn, we played the shit out of that game. Oftentimes, three players, it was often me, him, and his girlfriend, and um, that was fine, but when we could get all four people, and we could get in there, and we could really get it going, the only thing that really slowed it down was back then, the load times were a little irritating for like, okay, I'm gonna go into my inventory, I'm gonna check out my thing, and everybody always wants to see like what armor they just put on, so they want to like put it on, and look at it, and look at their character, and that would take some time, <laughs> sometimes, and it was kind of irritating, but otherwise... This was an amazing experience all the time. And even, even not way too long ago, I dug out the PlayStation 2, dug out my return to arms, put it on the TV, and actually got the multi-tap, and we were gonna play it. I think we played it for like a day. Uh, that's, that's, that happens with this group quite a bit. My friend group is... They're pretty lackluster about picking a game and actually sticking with it to the end. It happens all the time. I talked about that in a previous video, actually, too, that it's not just us. It seems to be very normal for gamers to not finish games, like very normal to the point where it kind of blew my mind and I was going through some of the trophies and stuff like that where it said like only 2.4% of people actually finish one storyline in freaking in Soul Calibur, and I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, you didn't even try. You didn't even try to play the game. But yeah, this is legitimately cool. To think that this goes the distance, okay? And it went out, it went out well. It was very well, very well received. And now I did say that I'd wondered if it was going to be. And I, I had to. I had to wonder because this wasn't something that i seen advertised. It wasn't something that I knew. It was something that I knew personally I'd been kind of craving was a dungeon crawler, something good to play. And then all of a sudden, there were all these people that were like, oh man, you better believe I'm buying that. And some people were a little ridiculous about it. Some people were like, I would have easily paid $90 for this. For a remastered PlayStation 2 game. The nostalgia is strong with you, sir. But but look, there's nothing wrong with liking a game and having that be one of the games that you would demand come back. Guys, when they said that they were going to remaster Metal Gear Solid 2 and Metal Gear Solid 3, you better believe that I jumped on that. I bought that three times. Yes, I did. I did that. I bought it for the Vita. I bought it for the PlayStation 3. And then because my PlayStation 3 went breaky, breaky, break, I ended up buying it for my Xbox 360. And you know what? All three times that I bought those games, I beat them. All three times I bought those games, all three times I played them on the system that I bought them for, and all three times I beat those games. And I love them, and they are easily some of the greatest, some of my favorite games that I have ever to this day, still even now, play. And you know what? That's why I fully understand when a game like this comes out, and there are people in the comments that are like, I cannot wait. Like, this is a game I have to go buy. I have to go buy it. I'm not 100% gonna back you if you're gonna tell me something like a PlayStation 2 game actually holds the same graphical... The same... Guys, graphics are essentially art. The whole game in general can be referenced as art, but one of the biggest things that comes down to artistic style is the graphics that were chosen for said game. Sometimes they stand the test of time and they are absolutely phenomenal. And sometimes they do not stand the test of time. And this is not up to me, and it's not necessarily up to you, but it is up to me, and it is up to you. 
if you like the graphics of these old PlayStation 2 games, you're allowed to. They're allowed to be something that you like more than the present graphics that we see in games today. Because that is your preference. Because it is comparing, comparing games like Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 1 and Diablo 3... I'm sorry, guys, but just by graphics, in terms of the general evolution of graphics that we have seen, Diablo 3 looks better to me. But that's not to say that these games don't easily stand the test of time and that they could, they could still look good. I, I tend to fail, feel that they don't look as good now, and sometimes the remasters don't do them a lot of favors. But I have to admit, it looks better than it did. Not trying to start another big feud here because I saw and I'm still getting comments even now about this kind of stuff. But guys, this is exciting. This is legitimately exciting because to think if this goes through and it works and then a second one comes out and it works, then damn, we could see the other two that I mentioned. There's no reason we wouldn't, right? It, it, this is exciting. This is legitimately exciting. It's really cool. I'm really interested, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I got my fingers crossed here, because that would be awesome. I would buy all four of these. Now, I did mention in the last video that this is kind of rough, and it's kind of coming out at a rough time, that it's going to be competing with the remake remaster of it's because it's, it's a remaster as far as as far as i understand the remaster of diablo 2 because diablo 2 is going to be sick okay diablo 2's nostalgia factor alone is going to sell that thing like crazy and when i say that it's up against something i mean very much it's lifetime sales which comes down to like a full year longer than that in full lifetime, but like in a year when materials are released and when we get to the end of the year, when we start talking about like the best games released this year, the best things we bought, the best this, the best that, is this very much a property that's going to come out, be played, forgot, be pushed to the background because it was a PlayStation 2 game, and then we're going to move on? Because like that's kind of what happened with things like when they remastered Onimusha. They remastered Onimusha 1, and it was absolutely beautiful, and Onimusha is one of my favorite games of all time, and I I played the shit out of that game and I praised it and I talked about it and I told other people to play it and it never got the traction that it needed and we did not see a remaster of two or three or four. And that was my concern with this. Was this something that came out of nowhere and I didn't know for sure that there were going to be that many people that were interested? And especially when you have people like me that really have to be picky about the games that we buy. Like, I only have enough money to buy so much and then I really got to watch what I spend. Well, because of that, my big sale, like, I'm not getting this game. Not yet. This game is going to have to sit there for a while before I can get it. Because for me, right now, the big, the next big spend that I'm going to do here, and probably for the next two, three months, because I only buy about a game a month, maybe. Maybe a game every two months. And right now, Mass Effect Legacy Edition, uh, that's... Le uh, legendary, legendary, blah, 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 legacy. Yeah, th that Mass Effect game has my money. It has all my money. It just takes my money. And it's not that expensive of a game, to be fair. All three Mass Effect games completely remastered. And even quality of life enhancements that are going to make the game that much better than it already was. You know what? Yeah, you get you get my money. And because I already had them on PC, I'm going to get them a little cheaper as well. Not by much. Instead of paying like the 50 something, I'm going to I'm going to I'm only going to pay like 45 something because Steam has the bundle things and it comes up and it says, "Hey, you already have 1, 2, and 3 of this bundle. Would you like to buy the last item in the bundle for a discount?" And I was like, <laughs> you damn right I would. Let me save that $5 because that $5 is going to buy me the new martial artist, the new karate expert in Tekken. So I'm fine with that too because she interests the hell out of me. She really does. That is really solid actual karate, actual combat level karate, not some of the stuff that they teach 
teach that's more brought down to a sports level because there's two different kinds of karate. This video is going to drag the shit on if I get into this like crazy. But there are really two different two different forms of karate. There's karate that you learn that's an actual fighting art and there's karate that you learn that's a sport. It's nothing wrong with learning either one. But if you learn actual Okinawan karate, like what was meant for combat purposes, you're a badass. You are. That's a badass art right there. And it's legitimate and it works. It y- you, you're, if you're just some random street fighter and you think you're going to mess with one of those guys, uh, you'd be really surprised what one of those people trained, not in the sports mentality, but trained in a combat mentality would do to you with that fighting art. It is a real fighting art and she's using it. She's using the actual combat form and you don't see that in video games very often. And that excites the crap out of me, so I can't wait to use that character. And because of that deal, I'm going to get both. But now my wallet is really screaming because if they do this, if they do this, then we could be seeing four great games on the horizon and I might have to buy all four of them because this is really cool. Anyways, guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing and, uh, you know, comment on videos and whatnot. I am paying attention. I don't always respond, but that's because currently I'm in the, I'm in the process of determining whether or not I'm going to start another series of episodes on here where I, where I literally answer said comments on videos in a video rather than constantly typing to everybody. But I don't know. I don't know if that's going to happen. So I will be answering comments. I try every now and then to answer comments here and there. And if I do that video, I will be doing that. Um, yeah. Welcome. I got other shit to record. So, you know, I'm, I'm a go. I'm still standing here sitting. I'm not even, I'm not even standing. I'm still sitting here. I should just push the button. Bye. I have spoken. Take what you will from it.